Let's finish up our work on the center of gravity. So we only have a few things left to do. For one, the body needs to keep its balance throughout the run in the front view. And two, we need to make sure that we rotate a bit of a tilt so that it looks as if the arms are influencing the body as they swing back and forth. So let's get started. We'll start with our position X movement to keep the body balanced. Let's grab our move tool. So on frame five, at our down position, this is where we'd want to shift the body over towards the direction of the planted foot. And not much at all. If we move it too much, it's going to look as if the character is wobbling. We don't want that. So it's just going to be a subtle shift. So now that we have this change on frame five, we can take a look at our function curve. Let's grab the curve editor and grab the position x-axis. You can see our value is at about negative 2.3. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this value without the negative operation. And we'll go ahead and move over to frame 12. See, we don't have a key here, but we'd always take this key on 11 and move that to 12 by using our key stat. And now we can go ahead and paste that value in. Great. So now it's just a matter of cleaning up the function curve. We can get rid of all in-betweens. Just go ahead and highlight those keys, delete them, and now we can adjust our tangents. So remember, we could either adjust them manually or if we highlight them, we can set our tangents to smooth. Take a look. They're already, they're already fixed. Now if we want to have access over our, our tangents again, we need to go ahead and set these keyframes to spline. And now we finish this instantly. So let's go ahead and minimize the curve editor and take a look. That's beautiful. All right, let's say we go ahead and finish up by animating in the rotate y axis to tilt the body. So this is really straightforward. Whatever arm is up, we're going to tilt in the opposite direction. All right, so you can see the right arm is up, so it's almost as if it's pushing the body in that direction when it swings up. So on frame one, we'll tilt the body slightly over in the y axis, not much. All right, great. So once we do that, we then have the value we can use to transfer this to frame 8 and 15. Now, to transfer to 15, this is really simple. We can just hold down Shift and drag over to 15 to overwrite that key. And then when we get to frame 8, we just need to use the reciprocal. So I'll just go ahead and copy this value in the y-axis. When we get to frame 8, we'll go ahead and paste that value in. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at our function curve. So we'll go back to our curve editor. Take a look at the x-axis. You can see that when we clone the key over, we may need to just go in and clean up our, our keys just a bit, or the tangents, that is. But no worries. Again, for something like this, we could always, again, set to smooth first and then set to spline. Okay. So we'd probably want to do the same thing for the z-axis. Just go in and adjust our tangency or use the smoothing tool. I'll go ahead and check the other tracks. All right, so the X is the same way. I'll go ahead and adjust that, just dragging down the end tangent of 15. The tangent on 1 looks good. And here we come to the Y axis. So here, we're going to go ahead and delete these in-betweens on 4 and 15. Now. Let's go ahead and check the z-axis. You can see that there's nothing here, so we'll just go ahead and just delete those keys, and we'll move right back to the y-axis because we have one more thing to do. In order to add weight and to correct the timing of the y-axis, this tilt, we'll want to add a few holds here so that we hold a bit longer when we get to each key so it looks as if there's really force behind each arm swing. So this is how we'll do this. We'll go ahead and highlight all of our keys and we'll set them to spline. And now it's just a matter of tweaking our tangent properties. So we'll go to frame one. Let's right click and get to our key info dialog. We'll go to advanced and see this value here of 
point three. Let's switch that to point five to lengthen that just for a little bit more to add more of a hold. When we get to this in between key, we're going to add that hold to both both halves. So it's going to be point five on both sides. Great. Now let's do the same thing on fifteen. This time we'll need to tweak the in tangent. So we'll set that to point five. All right. So let's see what we end up with. I'll close out the curve editor. And we'll play this back. So now it looks like the arms are truly influencing the body's rotation in that direction, which is very exciting. This is really cool. Look how well our run cycle is coming along. Very nice. Well, guess what? We are finished with the center of gravity. That means we can bring our attention to the character's upper torso in the next lesson.